James Version of the Bible. Matthew chapter number 4 beginning with verse 8 again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain Hallelujah. and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory he said unto him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Come on now. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Away with you, Satan. Hallelujah. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, yeah. and him only shall you serve. Say that again. I'm going to say that one more time so you hear it. You shall worship uh -huh. the Lord your God amen, amen. and him, uh -huh. we're talking about God, right. only you shall serve. Yes, sir. Right. Then the devil left him. And behold, the angels came and ministered to him. <laughs> the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. You may be seated. For a few moments, on today, I want to talk to you from the subject. Allow the Lord to take the lead. Allow the Lord to take the lead. And a theme I want to give you. Before you think and before you move, seek God first. Amen. John chapter 10 verse 27 states, Deacon Woods, the sheep, Listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I'm going to say that one more time. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Yes. Amen. As believers, we must have righteous motives when we move. And we must do our best to have and maintain a righteous focus on God. Righteous motives and striving to have righteous focus are what defines those striving to be right with God. So we have righteous motives. All right. And we have a righteous focus. One of the things that binds us together, not only as men and women of Christ, but as human beings, is the fact that we all have ambitions. We all have goals in life. And we all have a burning desire to accomplish something in one way, shape, or form. We all have a desire for the greater, whether it be spiritually or secularly. Yes, we all desire to thrive and in some way be acknowledged for our progress. We want to be acknowledged for the progress that we have made in life. It's not that we want God's glory. 
But we want folk to know that we are pressing forward and we are doing a good work as we endure insurmountable odds day in and day out. When we were younger, people would ask us, what do you want to be when you grow up? Many of us said things like, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a professional athlete. And some of us say, I want to be a dancer. <laughs> but when we reflect, back on our lives, as young people, we were mesmerized by what we saw and experienced in the people we observed and looked up to. Yeah, yeah. We were caught up in the attractiveness, the charm, the fame, the influence that we saw and experienced, which instantly gave us a devotion to that person. And we wanted to be like them. Like them. Or very close to what we saw in them. But see, when we think about it, what we were witnessing was the end result. We had no clue what they had to deal with. Or what they had to go through to get to the place where you admired them. We didn't understand the process. But we still desired to be like them. We didn't understand the struggle. But we still wanted to be like them. We wanted to be great. But as we grow in trees of righteousness, so that what we do give God glory, we understand that the work that it takes to find success, no matter how hard or involved it is, it must be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in a relationship Amen. with the true and living God. Amen. I want you to understand that it takes focus to be great. Yeah. It takes patience to be great. And Sister Regina, it takes effort, intentional effort to be great. But what we do and what we say as we strive to be great must be done to and for the glory of Almighty God. Yeah. Our motives for what we do have to be anchored in God. And we must strive to give God glory in what we do. See, if we understand on today that the road ain't going to be easy. There are going to be some problems. There are going to be some potholes. There are going to be some obstacles. There are going to be some detours. And there are going to be some problematic folk. Even in the church. As we navigate the process that leads us to our ultimate purpose in life. My brothers and my sisters, no matter what life looks like, we must not compromise and we must allow the Lord to take the lead. Amen. I know we all have questions about what tomorrow is going to bring, but we must not compromise and we must allow the Lord to lead. Many times we find ourselves all alone as we strive to press our way forward. 
but we must not compromise and allow the Lord to lead. We may not understand the ramifications of what we do today, but we must, must not compromise. And we must allow the Lord to lead sometimes. We may be tempted to go the other way. Talk now. Don't do it. But we must not compromise. But we must allow the Lord to lead. The songwriter said, lead me. And guide me. Along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk. Each day with thee, lead me, oh Lord, lead me. If we allow the Lord to take the lead, the Bible says in Psalm 16, verse 11, the Lord will show us the way of life. He will grant us joy, the joy of his presence. And we will know the pleasures of living with him and in him forever. On our encouragement on today comes from the gospel of Matthew. We know the disciple and the apostle known as Matthew was a former tax collector yes, yes. who Jesus called personally into kingdom service. The account recorded by Matthew was diligently written to give the seeker hope through a systematically investigated and inspired account Amen. of the evidence surrounding the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Just give the reader and the hearer a feeling of belief that Jesus, who was from Nazareth, is the Messiah. Yes. He is the promised one from days of old. Yes. Matthew's intent when he wrote the gospel was the ones who encounter it and interact with it. If they be a believer or a non-believer, be drawn closer to Jesus and be encouraged by the life and the doings of Jesus and gain a greater understanding of who he really is. Mm -hmm. This Jesus is the one true bestower uh -huh. of salvation. Yeah. Somebody should have gave God praise. Yeah. The key thing that we find here is that we are to put God first. Amen. <clears throat> and worship God only. This means we are to reverence Him. Amen. We are to adore Him. And we are to be devoted to Him. Hallelujah. We are to worship Him and Him only. Yes. We don't worship the building. We don't worship the leadership. We don't worship the pastor. We don't worship ourselves. But we worship God and God alone. As we look at the text, Satan is making one final desperate attempt. He's making one final attempt, Mother Woods, to corrupt Jesus. One of the things I say about people, Brother Woodard, is that they love to tell you what they have to. Even if they're doing it to you. <laughs> they can't wait to tell you about it. And here, Satan follows the same pattern. He finally reveals why he is doing what he is doing. Come on. Understand that Satan's main objective 
is to get Jesus to act contrary to the Father. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Satan's main objective in our life is to get us to act contrary to the Father. Amen. What? <laughs> if we in public, or we in private, All right. he wants us to act contrary to the Father. And not only did he want him to act contrary to the Father, he wanted him to worship him. Yes. If we look back at what we have discussed to, to, in temptation number one, Satan suggests what Jesus ought to do for himself. Right. In temptation number two, Satan suggests what the Father should do for the Son. Amen. Are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. Now, in temptation number three, <laughs> Satan is now suggesting what he can do for Jesus. Come on, come on. All right. David, I had to laugh myself. <laughs> he is suggesting what he, who is, is subjected to Jesus, yeah. can do for him. Yeah. Can y'all see the picture? Oh my God. However, I want you to understand, church, that the devil always wants something in exchange yes, 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 yes. for what he does for you. When we examine the text, we understand that Satan took Jesus to a very high mountain. Y'all with me? Yeah. We are not aware of which mountain he took Jesus to. But we know whatever mountain it was, it had a nice, clear view of the earth and its splendor. Come with me to the mountain. The devil shows Jesus the glories of Egypt. He shows Jesus the power and the splendor of Rome. He shows Jesus great Athens. He shows him the magnificence of Corinth. He shows him the wonders that are in Jerusalem. And he shows the many more kingdoms of the world. And he shows him all their glory. Understand, Jesus is God's own proclaimed King of Kings. We often say that, that he's the King of Kings. Because of this, we understand that Jesus has a divine right to all these kingdoms. Amen. Amen. However, it was to this right as the king of kings that Satan appealed to in this last temptation. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. He basically, he's basically telling Jesus, why should you have to wait for what's already yours? Yeah. <laughs> That's how he gets us in Virginia. Why you gotta wait for that position? You can just follow my plan and get it today. He was telling Jesus, you can have it right now. You shouldn't have to wait for what is rightfully yours. Jesus, I think that you deserve it right now. Uh-oh. You don't have to go through being hated on. You don't have to go through the struggle if you worship me. You can have it right 
now. No process. Mm -hmm. My God. No being denied. No being lied on. No being beat up. Oh, of course, no nails. No nail. No, 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 Jesus. You can have it. You don't have to do all of that. <laughs> See, what I'm offering you is what the Father has already promised you. My brothers and my sisters, Satan was offering the world to Jesus. But check this out. We understand Satan, Satan's corrupt terms were not God's terms. All right. All right. I'm say that again. Satan's terms were not God's terms. You see, understand. I want you to hear this closely. What the Father promised to the Son because of his righteous obedience, yes. Satan is now offering to the Son in exchange for his unrighteous disobedience. Come on now. Amen. 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 All right. Come on. Can we be real? Yes. Please. Can we be real? Please. I think that we can boldly admit that this is exactly how Satan comes for us. Come on, God. You can have whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If only. If only. You can have the position that you desire. If only. You can have that move. That move. If you, Even if it's somebody else's. <laughs> if only. <laughs> you can be somebody that the world looks up to. If only you bow down and worship me. See, Satan wants us to embrace the fact that all we have to do to get those things that we desire is to go after them, even in the church. The way the world goes after stuff. All right. Preach, preach. If I understand this church, and I want you to hear this closely, the ways of the world are the ways of Satan. All right. I know we don't like to talk about Satan a lot, but we have to know. We have to understand. Yes, sir. Satan is a counterfeiter. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Satan is the father of all lies. Yes. Amen. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. Yes, and understand this. I want y'all to hear this. It was what you get. In return, Amen. Is not what you envisioned, Amen. Nor what you were promised. Amen. If you compromise, Amen. Amen. Lastly, Jesus tells Satan, "I'm going to use the words of the disciple Martin Lawrence." All right. He told him to get the step in. <laughs> Let the road. Get the step in. Sometimes you gotta tell the devil to get the step in. He's trying to get you to go left when God says go right. Get the step in. He's trying to get you to backbite and talk about one another. Get the step in. But not only did he tell the devil to get the step in. He goes back to the Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. The Pentateuch. Uh -huh. That's the first five books of the Bible. Uh -huh. He goes back to Deuteronomy. Uh -huh. Chapter number six. All right. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Where it says, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. 
You shall fear only the Lord your God. God. Y'all got that? Uh -huh. You shall serve him uh -huh. with an all-field reverence and with profound respect. Amen. Yes. You gotta put some respect on God's name. Yes. 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 With all field reverence uh -huh. and profound respect. Yes. And swear oaths by his name alone. Uh -huh. So I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, if Jesus did not compromise, yes, sir. Come on. All right. Neither should we. Amen. With that all said, what is it that we must grasp when we are tempted to put ourselves first uh -huh. and put God last. Uh -huh. Number one, direction that does not come from God is simply misinformation. Amen. I can stop there. Direction that does not come from God yes. is simply misinformation. Yes. Amen. It leads us, Dr. Cobb, to a place called nowhere. Oh. <laughs> and we get to nowhere fast. Yes. Y'all right? Okay. Point number two. Anything or anyone not authorized by God likes the power to lead yeah. us to a successful outcome yes. or the big or victorious living. Point up to you got that? No, no, no. Anything not authorized by God mm -hmm. likes the power to lead us to a successful outcome or victorious living. Let me say something about that. You can do something without God, have success but fail miserably. Yes. 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 You will think you have success, yes. but you failed yes. because you have removed God from the equation. Yes. Because understand this whenever God is in the equation, you get a positive result. Yes, 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 yes. If you're grieving, mm -hmm. <laughs> add God to the equation. Yes. You got joy. Yes, right. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. <laughs> if you're troubled well. and you add God to the equation, mm -hmm. you got peace. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you're alone, uh -huh. And you got add God to the equation, you got company. Yes. All right. Good company. Good company. Jesus. So as long as God is in the equation, yeah. right. everything's gonna be all right. Everything yes. is gonna be all right. All right. right. Yes. And last but not least, when God is removed from the equation. What we receive is immeasurably less than what we thought we would be uh -huh. or what the adversary promised us we would get. Yes. The songwriter says, it may be in the valley where the captives dangers hide. Yes. It may be in the sunshine when I, where I in peace and abide. Yeah. But this one thing that I know, if it be dark or fair, yes. if Jesus, Jesus goes with me, uh -huh. I'll go yeah. anywhere. Yeah. There may be those, my brothers and my sisters, who reject the call of God on our lives. Well, Declare on today. If Jesus is with me, 
I will go. We may get irritated and we may get stressed, but if Jesus is with us, we will go. There may be those who want to stop the progressive work. We can't be stopped. We can't be slowed down because Jesus is with us. There may be times when we get in our own way, but if Jesus is with us, we will go. The songwriter says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Do I got five folks up in here, up in here who have lost their guilty stains. See, I don't know about you, but I'm going to allow Jesus to lead the way. When I'm confused, I will allow Jesus to lead the way. When I'm in doubt, I will allow Jesus to lead the way. In times of misfortune, I will allow Jesus to lead the way. When the enemy rises up and haters come alongside, I will allow Jesus to lead the way. See, the billows may roll, the breakers may dash, friends may turn their back on me, the support may be sketched, but I can't see to find my way. I will allow Jesus to lead the way. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that Jesus, he's a friend you can trust. Jesus makes the pathway smooth. Jesus is the calm in the midst of the storm. Jesus is your bridge over troubled water. Jesus is my portion. Jesus is my cup. Jesus makes my way secure. Jesus supplies all my needs. Because of him, my footing is secure. The songwriter says, when everything else fails, I can go to the rock. Oh, the 
He offered forgiveness on the cross. He offered salvation on the cross. He offered affection. He had anguish. He was suffering. But he gave a word of victory when he laid down his head on Friday. He was placed in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there for the rest of the day. Because he laid it. Since the Lord's I can 